<laughs> hey, what's up, Facebook? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we are here. We are here. Hey, what's been going on this week? Mm. It's been a crazy week, and it's only Wednesday. I've been screwed up every day this week of as to what day it was. Good thing I write everything <laughs> down because I'd be missing appointments. Um, everybody wants to, I think because school is starting and fall is coming, everybody wants to talk about podcasting. Everybody wants yeah. to talk about starting a podcast. Or you do too, and talking to people. How many people say, Well, for two years I've been thinking about this? And uh, do you hear that? Two years? Like, I hear that from a lot of people. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I guess they're not Aries because if they were, they would have just done it and figured it out and went like you and I did. But uh, no, it's, it's they crazy get intimidated. A lot of the same thing. Uh, people have been reaching out for out to me for for a lot of crazy a lot of crazy requests. And not just about podcasting, but you know through video. And somebody actually asked me how to grow a blog, and I have no clue. Really? I have no idea. I'm not a blogger. I've never been a blogger. My idea of writing is like, it's, it's horrible because I, I write how I speak. So I don't have the, that ability to kind of put things in that uh, newsprint format. Uh, you always say that, that you're not a good writer, but you are a good writer. I've read some of your stuff and you are a good writer. So that's not true. It's because I write how I speak it. So if you if you you know who I am, if you, since you know me, it's like oh yeah, I hear him. I can hear him saying that. And but uh, yeah, if if I try to submit something like to the newspaper or to some major publication, which I have done, and they've sent me a nice little letter back saying thank you. This is pretty cool content, but you can't write. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Well, we're we're hard on ourselves. We're totally hard on ourselves. So you but know I, what I'm noticing? I'm that? noticing that I'm not actually seeing us live. Even I am. No. Are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm maybe it's not right now. Oh. Okay. I'm totally not seeing that. But that doesn't, you know, doesn't mean anything. Just refresh your Facebook page, and it'll probably pop right up. That's that's freaking pain I mean. in the ass. That goes for anybody else. If you ever have a problem where a video stalls out, a live video stalls out, just refresh your page. It'll bring it right back up, and you won't have any problem catching up where you're at. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. So, yeah, crazy, crazy week. Been meeting with people. Guess when you talk to them and they say, you know, I've been thinking about it for two years, and they bring all these things up to you, and you're like, no, you don't have to worry about that. Uh no, like you don't have to worry about that. And by the time you finish talking to them, they're like, you can hear them like, ah, like they just feel so much better. Like they've been waiting. I don't know. They, it's like you've given them permission to just start and you don't have to be perfect. Like it's like this big load off their shoulders. I'm like, no, just start because guaranteed you're not going to stay your show isn't going to stay the same. So yeah, it's been a crazy week of doing that. And I no, that's you and I both love right doing there. that. That is actually perfect advice right there. What you just said, because when you start a show, any show, it doesn't matter if you had the most perfect idea when you started it, it's going to change. It's going to grow. It's going to evolve. You know, other outside influences are going to change the direction that you take things. And it's, that's just the way of the beast. I mean, that's podcasting, that's radio, that's television, that's uh -huh. live streaming, everything that we do. And we're putting stuff out. Hell, that's even blogging. Your and audience is going days. to what they want from you. And you are going to kind of evolve around what your audience needs. Yeah, exactly. So requires you something of you. Huh? Which requires you to be a certain way. Right? Mm. Sometimes. It does. It does. But it first, does. let's, um, if, for those of you that are watching, please, please, please share this out. Because this is a really kick-ass topic. 
that CJ brought up um, for us to talk about tonight. And this is a really important one. And this is really beyond the think positive. Uh, and we're both of the same mind of forget the think positive stuff beyond that. And I'm glad you brought this topic up because uh, it's something that, thanks, Angela, you rock, woman. You're awesome. Yes. I'd like hey, to thank you, Anthony Haynes, for joining us. I saw that. Saw that. Uh, the important topic. This is something that I trained on, and of you know, don't that whole you know act as if we're not talking about being fake by any means. Um, and CJ, I'm sure will give you give history on this because this is a this was a big part of your career. This topic. Oh, absolutely. So let's Very so let's get into this. I wanted to do something else before we actually did the intro, but you know what? We'll talk about that at the end of the show because it was a lot of fun and you and I got to be on somebody else's show together and I was kind of excited about that. So we'll, uh, we'll act as if that never came up and uh, <laughs> let's get into the show, shall we? Absolutely. So, thank you everybody for coming to this episode, tuning into this episode of Grit and Grace. This is my amazing, my awesome, my way smarter than me cohort lynn burnett God, so not true but thank you, you know, i'll take week, it every week i come out here and i have to come up with something different to say because your initial reaction seems to set the stage for how the show goes and i can really tell, okay oh yeah oh yeah if if you have one of these reactions like you just had right there that tells me we're going to have a fun show that's, okay. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, Anthony, I apologize. I did I did trim the beard though. It's not as shaggy this week as it was last week. So That's true. I was you know, I was kind of thinking about that, you know. I wanted to attract his shirt's Anthony. clean. My shirt's, shirt's clean, clean, yes. No. <laughs> what more could you ask for? But yeah, today's uh today's topic is act as if and the reason why I brought this up is because it's one of these things that I've been hearing a lot about lately, and especially people saying, well, if you're acting as if you're not being true to yourself and you're not being authentic and you're not this and you're not that. And I really believe that they were missing the point because the act as if principle has, I mean, in its, in its form as act as if it's been around since 1884 and a prince, and it's scientifically proven that when people act as if they can change their lives, they can they can mold their lives in the direction that they want them to go. And when I when I was having the conversation early on when we we're just discussing this topic, you know, we kind of went off on a on a like a mini sode right then. If we would have been recording that, that would have been a great extra bonus feature, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we never think of those things. And uh, yeah, that was so funny you know, when that came up too. We were just like, we were just like spewed ideas that just came out of us, and it was just it, it wasn't even planned. And then both of us like head down, quiet. We were both madly taking notes. That's how it hits yeah, us. We are totally inspired. Pulling this down. So, um, like I was saying, though, it it was uh, discovered. This principle was discovered in 1884 by philosopher William James, an, Amer an American philosopher. And his argument was that if you behave as a certain type of person, then you become that person. After years of research, it's been shown that this idea applies to all aspects of our lives. So I know a lot of you probably have seen the movie Wall Street. I've seen it probably 30, 40 times. It's one of my favorite movies of all yeah. time. Yeah. And Ben Affleck has a just a small cameo role in this movie where he is talking to this this group of interns at at this long conference table, and that his, his entire speech, his motivational speech, is all about act as if. And I think that is one of the reasons why people are starting to get this kind of this negative connotation of what that principle is actually means. 
is because the whole thing was, it doesn't matter who you are. You act as if you are the best of this and you act as so, and there's some truth in what he was saying, but then he kind of got carried away with it. And he's like, it doesn't matter if you are the weakest little thing, you got to act like you got the, you got to act as if you got the biggest set of. Yeah. So (laughs) that is kind of where I kind of want to start off at. And I know I've got a bunch of stories about this, but I kind of want to hear what your take was uh, on that movie when you saw that. And this is not a movie show today. It's just, it was a point of reference. Yeah. And I think being a movie, you have to take everything with a grain of salt, but definitely one of those uh, scenes that just infuses. And I, and you know, again, it affects everybody differently. So things like that get me really, fire those people that would jump on top of a table when I see something like that like I'm just yeah and so movies like that yeah absolutely I love and it's true it and just just the actions um of him even being that thing as if just the energy he brought with it, the because that's all part of it as well. You carry yourself a certain way, and I I loved it. I loved that movie, loved it. Uh, the The speech in itself, though, it, if you, you got to admit, if if you only watched that portion of the movie, that is a a, a motivational speech that is Gary Vaynerchuk worthy, right there. Absolutely, it was it was pretty amazing. But uh, you know, getting into what act as if really is about you know it's it's telling us that if if we act okay so basically where i'm going with this is we act a certain way based on what society norms tell us we should be acting in that situation for example when we're kids when we're at home we're acting out we're just kind of doing our own thing you know mom's yelling at us all the time throwing telephone books at the back of our heads whatever it is we act differently than when we're out in public. And that's because our, our parents threatened our lives. If you act up in public, I'm going to smack you around with the telephone book. So, you know, we learn this act as if process really from the earliest stages of our development. But somewhere along the way, we got derailed. And, and I kind of wanted to get you guys' take on that, the audience take on that. I mean, have you have you felt that way? Do you think that act as if is is something that can help you, or is it something that maybe you think, ah, eh, whatever? It's just some old guy that you know thought of this idea and made money on it, like every other online entrepreneur does nowadays. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was their version of online businesses. Yes. Well, I think that I mean. Everybody can have an opinion, but, you know, going back that this is over a hundred years ago and there's a ton of research in the meantime, but like anything, it gets skewed, right? So like you said, we're not talking about acting like you're a millionaire and you're, you know, in bankruptcy or, I mean, there's certain ways. It's not lying about who you are. It's not being something different than you are. It's really, I think it's, it's being more of who you are, really magnified, I think. But it's really about, I don't know, trying on, pretending, adopting uh, characteristics and virtues of what, who that is that you want to be, the person that you want to be. So for me, the way I use it is I always look at somebody that I admire the two biggest ones, one, Prince, and uh, Tony Robbins. I've done Tony Robbins coach training, and I've watched him since I was 12. So certain ways I'll be like, I'll say, so what, or what would Tony Robbins do in this situation? And I then it takes it off of me, and I think, okay, well, he would do this, and he would do this, and he would do that. So what do I need to do? So that's how I do the act as if. But it's really about, uh, yeah, it's not about being fake at all. But you know, did, I, Anthony said something. 
Okay, let's see what that. I, I'm sorry, I was out of the screen because I went and pulled something up. It says, "It worked for me when I stopped calling myself a writer and started calling myself an author. Big things happened. Absolutely, yes. The, you know, what you just said there is exactly the point. You, know, you really have to train your mind to adjust to what it is that you want to accomplish. And a writer is, you know, like I said, you a, a blog he writes. I mean, but an author tell stories they they write books all that kind of stuff so if if you place author above writer and you act as if you are that author and that, we got to back step a little bit there because it's it's not good enough just to act as if you're an author you actually have to create that place you have to develop that that character if you will of, of being that author, who are the authors that are around you or that you've been influenced by that you have taken on those personas. And I'm not saying you're, you're acting like, you know, that author, but they have habits and they have methods and we borrow and we all do this. We all borrow traits from different people who have influenced us throughout our lives. So when you, when you take that opportunity, you hit, when, once you've created that persona you want to act as if you are already that author. You've already seen yourself through success. Now all you're doing is repeating those steps that you've that you've mentally gone through and rehearsed over and over and over. And that is what he's talking about. That's what becomes you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's taking on a role. And I had this great quote from William Shakespeare, and I can't find it, that totally encompassed what as a great example of acting as if is it's really taking on a role and looking at if I want to be someone who does this what does that person do what are the thoughts they have what's the language it's like it's it's taking on a role and pretending and kids do that so perfectly kids pretend and they become that person and it's 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 really asking yourself good if if you were to um, you know what what are the characteristics that you would need? what are the habits that you would have to have to to be that person to accomplish that thing that you would want to accomplish? You know, I can tell you right now that there is some kid this this morning who went out to the sand lot. And he's playing baseball with his buddies and he's saying that he's J Derek Jeter stepping up to the plate or something to that effect. And this is, this is, like I said, this is played out from the time we we've started to, you know, develop. And, you know, I've, that, that was one of the coping mechanisms that we adopted with the military, even throughout my deployments, we create these, I don't want to say it's an alter ego, but we create this place in our mind that we can go to and we can access relatively easily because it's not natural for a human being to fire rounds in anger at another human being. It's not natural. So all those criminals who are locked up in prison and all that kind of stuff, there's not something normal there. But, uh, when you're when you're in a situation like in in combat, you really have to put yourself in a completely different state. So that act as if concept was something that was really kind of pushed towards us to say, hey, this is a coping mechanism. This is something that you can adopt that will help you put yourself in a in a place other than yourself right now. So it's still you, and it's still that authentic you, but it's a different uh, persona if that makes any sense. And it it's it's a way for you to be able to shut off that um, that aspect of your of of your consciousness because I know when I the first time I fired around in anger, it scared the hell out of me that I might have hit that person. It yeah. really did. But at the same time, I realized that whether I hit them or didn't hit them, I was still going back to my cot. The, at the end of the day, that that moment in my life was done for that time. So it's it's 
you know, it's used as a coping mechanism for, for anxiety, for depression, for all these different things that can really hurt us long term. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily, you know, you know, being in, not authentic. It's just finding a way to be able to let go of your stinking thinking, I guess, is what I mean. It is. And, the, and saying an alter ego is good because I think that uh, no matter how, how, how much work in person, we work, how much we work on ourselves, uh, there's still, when we're totally alone, when we're by ourselves, that is the real, real us. And and whether we're comp- sometimes like I, I don't know whether I'm totally like that the way I am by myself when I'm around other people. Not that I have to try to be or anything, but I think when we're completely alone, there's there's nuts of trying to impress or please or anything like that or carry ourselves a certain way or say something a certain way or be silly or whatever. I mean, if people saw what I did when I was by myself around the house, like I pace, I talk, I have conversations, like (laughs) I'm dancing uh, and that I would look at that as my alter ego. And sometimes I have to use that to be able to, before I get into a meeting that I think is going to be somewhat intimidating. I have to, you know, I have to get myself in that state. I have to think, you know, and I will think, think of things like that scene in the movie or, you know, different things or people that I admire or look up to. And I have to picture that in my mind and get myself in that state. And it is just more of me. It is a little bit of an alter ego. And who do I have to be to accomplish what it is I want to accomplish? If you want to you need to sell, then, you know, who do you need to be to be able to do that? You know, do you have to be the person that builds relationships? Do you have to be that person that's helpful and kind? Do you have to be that leader that, uh, that brings people together, that go-to person. So uh, alter ego is a great metaphor to use, a great example to use for that, because that will give you a little bit of a hint of who is that person that you have to be. Definitely. You know, and it works for what we do here even. Um, There are so many people who are intimidated to get on in front of a camera or maybe even in front of a mic without a camera. There are still people that are very timid and shy when it comes to putting themselves out in front of people to be able to be judged. Um, Even myself, to a certain degree, uh, I I was telling you when we were talking last week, I was telling you about that experience I had where I got to MC the the, Mm -hmm. uh, beat the bar at the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. I have never in my entire life spoke in front of more than, I think, maybe 400 people. That was the max number of people that I ever had to stand in front of. And all these people were people that were in my space. They were veterans or, you know, they, they were people that I had some commonality with where it didn't matter how I showed up because they were, they've experienced the same things that I had and I had experienced the same things that they have. But now I step on a grander stage. I I get in front of over 1200 people. And these people come from all over the world, not just all over the, you know, South Dakota, but all over the world. And they've got different perceptions of how they want to party and have fun. You know, they're at different states of inebriation, should we say? <laughs> so there's there's a whole lot of things that get opened up in that situation. And I'll admit that when I grabbed that mic for the first time, when I stepped up to the mic, stepping on the stage, no problem. Not a problem at all. As soon as I grabbed that mic, it was just like jello knees, uh, gut wrenching, like, oh, holy shit, what am I going to say? Really? I can't imagine that. It was all off the cuff. It was ad-libbed. I had an idea of what I should, or I had um, 
it's kind of like a, in professional wrestling. They don't give you a script per se. They say, this is where you start. This is where your middle is. And this is where your end is hit these points. And that's kind of what I had going on to this stage. Uh -huh. So I had uh -huh. this anxiety built up in me from the second I did that. And then right there, boom, as soon as that hit me, I looked out at the stage and I just yelled out as long, you know, basically as I, what's up Sturgis, South Dakota, how the fuck are you doing? And as soon as I said that, it was gone because that act as if kicked in. I now wasn't, you know, CJ standing up vulnerable in front of a bunch of people that are probably going to judge him. I'm CJ. I'm standing in front of a bunch of people and I'm going to make Wolfman Jack wish he was me. That <laughs> was with that. And I tell you what, it was one of the most exhilarating experiences that I ever ever experienced outside of my family, you know, especially events in my family. Yeah. So yeah. it was just insane, but it was that act as if principle, that ability to switch on that persona. It was me. It was exactly what you would expect to see from raw and real from grit and grace. It was everything that I do wrapped into one moment and it was absolutely freaking amazing, but it was that act as if principle that put me in that place to be able to, go to the next step. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, because the mind is a big part of it. And the mind, the beautiful thing that I love about the mind is that it doesn't really happening. I mean, you can use, leverage your mind and you can just have those thoughts. There was um, in that little video, I love how they had, uh, they had uh, seniors acting as if they were younger dressing younger, thing, and how their health improved, their minds improved. It's, you know, it's, I love, yeah, they, they became more active. So it's taking on that persona. Absolutely. Who do you have to be in those moments where you're deathly afraid and the spotlight's on you. And what it, what is it? What's that persona? Who's that person that you're going to be? It, you, it's still, you know, people can say, oh, well, it's acting and that's not really you and it's fake. Well, but it's you playing that persona, driving force. So those things that need to be done, it's still done your style. You're just, you're, you're feeling the emotions. You're your, you know, if you have to dress a certain way, carry yourself a certain way, you know, with Tony Robbins in the training, he talks a lot about this. And for him, he calls it state. You get into that state, you pump yourself up, you tell and you, you do whatever it is that you have to do to get into that flow state of taking on that role. And it in incorporates all of those different things. You're absolutely playing a role. It's not saying that you're someone that you're not. Right. And it goes back to even acting. The The best actors in Hollywood, you know, let's, you, we can talk De Niro, Tom Hanks, Will Smith, you know, just those are Meryl just the ones that kind of pop. Meryl Streep, yeah. You believe they are that person in that role. You, I mean, how... There's actors that I don't even know their names. I only know their characters because they did such a good job creating that character. But even though they've created that character, it's still them that's playing that character, their mannerisms, the things that they bring to it. So even actors on, in, on the big screen or even on the small screen, they're doing exactly what we're talking about. They're just doing it in a performance aspect where they're going to shut that off at the end and kind of go about their business. Mm -hmm. But if you meet a lot of these actors and I've met some pretty awesome actors and you can see the same mannerisms that they portray in just conversating like we are, they will portray the same mannerisms that you saw on screen. And when you see that, when, when you recognize that, it's like, oh, okay, that's the difference between a professional actor and those people who you watch at community theater. To be or not to be, you know, those folks, you're, they're not going to sell that no. persona. They're not. No. Gonna do but you get wow. someone like, say, 
you know, uh, Will Smith playing that role and you're going to believe that's Hamlet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely have to incorporate everything. And when you see the, you know, they they can make themselves cry. They immerse themselves so completely. And yeah, that's the exact same thing. It's, it's, it's taking on that whole role. I like what you said way back in the beginning, how we see kids, you know, they could be, you know, they behave perfect out in public, but then at home they run around like maniacs. They can act as if they're well-behaved children. They are capable of doing that. And we're so we're all capable of acting the way that we need to act and, and being able to uh, portray something. Absolutely. However, what the principal is telling us is if we are consistently acting in that role, we will become that role. That's right. So this is all about action. This is not just sitting and thinking positively and I'd like to do that and I'd like to accomplish that. And yes, one day I'm going to. We know that absolutely required. For anything, you can't just sit on a mountaintop and cross your legs and, you know, and wish something and, and say it to yourself and think positive and use your mind that way. You can't. You have to take action. As soon as you have a thought, you need to act on it. Otherwise, your mind is going to take over and it's going to. This is the same thing as taking on that role. So, you know, if. If you were acting as if the person you wanted to be, if you wanted to change and you wanted to make a breakthrough, how would you act differently? Because a lot of people don't know. So when you talk to people and they say, I want, so like, what do you need to do? And they don't. So, you know, then you can do that. That's a big thing with psychologists and positive psychology is, okay. So imagine that person that you want to be. How would that person dress? How would that person talk? How would they act? How would they be around people? What the, would their social life be like? So that's how would they talk? How would they move? What's, you know, are they loud? Are they quiet people? Are they, who do you need to be? <laughs> I lost you. I, I'm sorry. I, you were cutting in and out, so I wasn't sure if you're talking, if you're not talking, what was going on. And then you froze for a second. So, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, some technical difficulties tonight on Grit and Grace TV. Yeah, we had yeah. two, we had two flawless shows, and then of course, you know, the technical difficulty night. So it's just par for the course. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to deal with that and you know tighten that one up in the audio. A little bit, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that look know, on your I, face, just, I'm like, <laughs> what? what the hell? Uh, <laughs> so now that we're kind of talking about what steps can we take, uh, I I put this up in the group, and it was a challenge that I put out to the group to try the principle out for yourself. Uh, kind of, and I and I put down three uh, three steps, three guidelines, real simple, real easy. But it also comes with a little bit of self-discovery. Uh-huh. So That's we're, always good. I'm going to go through these three steps here real quick, and then we'll we'll talk about those a little bit just to kind of get where what your thoughts are on this. But you know, step number one was find the emotional root of your desire. Identifying the emotion you want to feel is as important to the process of acting as if. Once you have identified the emotion you want to feel, move on to step two. So now what that means to me and everybody, I don't care who you are. An emotion is a product of thought. You have the ability to control thought. So therefore you can find that emotion you want to feel. You can control the thought that will produce that emotion. And once you feel the emotion, once you get into that emotion, it's real easy to maintain character, uh, to use, you know, acting yeah. terminology. Yeah. And once you get into that character, that's that. And they're calling it the emotional root because that is what's going to root you there, keep you there, and and help move you towards success. I agree. 
do anything is based on how we feel. Wow, I guess I said it all then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so step number two. This is this is another one that's kind of supporting the first one. Be aware of your root emotion in all areas of your life. Once you have identified the root emotion of what you really want, you can move on to the next step, which is finding evidence that you already feel this emotion in your life. So start feeling your root emotion now as you project more of this emotion, your desire will draw closer to you as you start to feel the way you will feel when you have it. I know that's a lot of weird kind of double talk going on there for, it kind of got me confused just reading it, but uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, it's your GPS. It's absolutely your GPS. <clears throat> and we do anything based on how Absolutely. I love these points because it's true. If you can, we just wander through life so on uh, autopilot. And so knowing the feeling that you want to feel, that root emotion that you want to feel is a very simple thing. But you know, some people do struggle with that. But thing, and then you can sit down and go, oh, what are the things in my life where I do feel that? And and it's your GPS, absolutely, because then you can start going, well, shit, I ain't feeling that anywhere in my life, and I've got to start changing that. So what can I do, because we can't control, comes in, well, who do I need to be? Say, you know, love is your root emotion, and you're going, well, I'm not really feeling the love. Well, I can't control that. I can't make people do that. So I'm going to show that to other people, and then they're going to want to show that back to me. So it's absolutely, it's, a, it's your GPS. It's your GPS. You know, it's, it kind of goes back to when I was helping people uh, through, through my coaching practice, uh, become more outgoing and develop relationships with people with perfect strangers. One of the things I would tell them is, you know, you got to put yourself in a position where you can feel your ability to go out and do things. How did you feel when you talked to say the mechanic that was fixing your car? Because everybody, when you bring your car in, you're not shy when you're talking to them. You might not know what you're talking about. So you might be a little bit, I don't know what I'm talking about. But at the same time, you're telling them, hey, my car's broken. I want you to fix it. You have more control and more command. So when I would talk to these people about meeting you know, women or meeting men and things like that, which I didn't really talk to too many women about meeting men. I talked to more, mostly men about meeting women. <laughs> And, you know, the thing I always say is, hey, you know, you might not feel like that alpha male, that king of the jungle, but at some point in your life, you have a connecting feeling. You have something that where you just felt like you nailed it. Everything was working perfectly and, and you remember that feeling. And every one of them would say, yeah, yeah, I remember exactly, man. And it was this time and they would go through the whole story. But at the end of the story, I'd be like, okay, that's the root emotion. That is what we need yes. to tap into. So you can have that confidence and that self-esteem to go up and just start that conversation. And that's what number two it really was, is be aware of that root emotion in all areas of your life. Because it doesn't have to come from the focus of where you're going right now. It can come from an experience that you've had in the past. And in fact, that's typically where you're going to get it from because you've already experienced it. You liked it. It was your drug of choice and you want it back. Mm -hmm. So that's, yep. that's what number two was for me. Brilliant. Yeah. That's exactly so, it. I agree. So number three is watch your reactivity. The first two items in, are the front end things you can do to act as if, but this is what you can do on the back end. Start to react to situations as if you are someone who is already has what you want when the subject comes up. Consider the following. Would, would a person who has a lot of money say, I can't afford that when they saw something pricey that they wanted? Chances are they would probably say something like, I would love to get that. And that's, that's kind of that verbiage, what they're talking about right there. So just 
to kind of clear that up. That verbiage, that just that change in, I wish I could afford that versus I would like to have that. You've got a negative connotation over here and you've got a positive action uh, driven comment on this side. I would like to have that as saying inside is, is kind of setting that mindset like, okay, I, I would like to have it. So what do I need to do next to get that? Yes. And it's, it's the one, it's the one action that leads to the next action that leads to the next action. And that's the reactivity. It's, it's being aware of yourself, your, your, everything that you're doing, the way you're putting yourself out there, the way you're reacting to things to be able to program those reactions. Uh, and the same goes for, you know, when you're, when you're at work and you're trying to become that sales leader of the month or whatever it is that you do at work and you, you're still using these act as if principles, how you react. So, so if you don't get that sale, are you going to go back and react the way you did before? Or are you going to react in a completely different way? Is, is your aunt, is your way of, of dealing with that failure going to be like, well, if that guy would have supported me better, maybe I would have made that sale or, or is it, you know what, there is something that I didn't quite do right. Maybe I didn't give them the right features or maybe I didn't sh uh, provide the solution to their problem the right way. What do I need to do to be able to make sure that I understand what the problem is before I try to sell them something, a solution that they don't want. Uh -huh. So there's, there's different ways of doing this in all aspects of your life, whether it be professional in the bedroom, outside of the bedroom, just in general relationships. I mean, it's, it's one of these things that we can literally change how we show up in the world just by being cognizant of how we are perceived in the world. It's almost like finding the habits. Like say you want to be um, like a weightlifter. Maybe you want to get into shows, right? So you want to... Oh. Right. So, you know, I want to be that person. I want to be that person on the stage and I want to be all oiled up and I want to flex my muscles. Well, who are you going to have to be to be that person? <laughs> who are you going to have never seen Rick. You know, are, do you have to be the person that, um, you know, eats well and 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 take supplements or whatever, whatever that person needs to do. Do you have to be the person that goes to the gym and works out? Like, who do you have to be? So it's, 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 I see it as habits, as, as taking on habits of that person that you want to be. Sometimes yeah. long-term, not always. Sometimes it's just a right. situation. Maybe you're, you know, somebody's trying to screw you over and you need to get some money back or you need to deal with a difficult situation. A yeah, phone yeah. call, who do I have to be? You, you, right. don't, you don't need to go to the gym and, you know, all of a sudden, hey, my name is Arnold and I, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to work out. And uh, hey, uh, can I get on this this piece of equipment here? Because it looks like you're just about done. You don't have to be that guy. But, you know, if that helps, it, it's okay. Absolutely. But, you know, Arnold is one of my biggest ins inspirations just because of the way he, he looked at bodybuilding and using that same that same uh, example that you were kind of going with, uh, going with at the beginning, you know, he's the guy who said your mind and your muscle has to be connected. You have to understand what's going on between here and here to be able to get that pump and all that kind of stuff. And what he was kind of getting at is you have to feel your, your muscles growing. You have to believe that everything that you're doing with that one rep, with that one set, with, with that one meal, everything that you're doing is building towards that, that goal of what you want to be. And if you're not acting as if you are already an accomplished bodybuilder, you're not going to become that accomplished bodybuilder. It's same thing with those kids who become, who start off at 10 years old on the little league baseball team. They believe that they're the David justices. And I know this is going back ways and these guys are retired, but that was my, my generation. And, but uh, I mean, they believe that there are these, these people and they work their asses off every day. Every time they went out to that sandlot, they hit a hundred balls. They, they caught a hundred balls. They threw a hundred balls, whatever it takes. 
they were doing that, but they at, at all times they were that Chuck Knobloch or they were Dave Justice or they were Kirby Puckett or Harmon Killebrew, or whoever going back, Sandy Colfax, if that's who you want to go to. They believed that that's who they were and they were acting like those people so they could achieve the same success that those people had. Yeah. And that that's an extremely powerful thing. If when we can actually embrace that principle and be able to create the life that we want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's very powerful and it does get you through, you know, sometimes it does help you put, aside if you kind of adopt that persona a little bit it does help you get through those things now we're going to have a pdf on this that people can go to our website and download later this week right we are and it is it is going to be up tomorrow i promise i'm putting a deadline on myself Ooh, careful what you I, promise i know I, I i when i promise i promise and okay. i'll make it happen okay so, i love that uh, here's I let things slip today because I was out trying to buy a house. Well, I was trying to get the documentation together to buy a house. Did not realize that I was going to be running, not just, you know, within my community, but other towns, different parts of the state, all over the place. Trying yeah. to get everything together so we could buy this house. And uh, I, The house you're in now a, or a different one? Different one. Completely different one. It's, oh, uh, it's, yeah, so a whole different house. And I didn't yeah. really say anything to too many people, really, because I didn't want to put myself in that position where if something didn't happen, to be like, hey, what happened? I thought you were buying this house. Mm -hmm. You know, God, that sounds like Rodney Dangerfield. I got to be careful with that one. But anyways, um, so we were, we were out about trying to do that, and I didn't have the time that I needed to do my due diligence on this show. So... Yeah, tomorrow that PDF will be up on gritandgrace.com. And it's also going to be up on the revised Ripka Media page. There is going to be an entire section dedicated to resources, you know, from all the shows that we support at Ripka mm -hmm. Media. That's it's, actually gritandgrace.com. Yeah, I mean, and I'll repeat that because she, she <laughs> can hear it. So. You can go to gritandgracetv.com to the resources page and you'll be able to download that. And uh, yeah, yeah, and please, folks, we have been doing everything. And we tried bribing you guys with, with uh, you know, gift cards. We've tried, well, we haven't tried threatening you yet. Maybe that's coming up later. But, no, maybe that's you know, what we need. Fear. Yeah, we right? need to instill fear. Fear. So, um, yeah, from now on, if, if we don't get a review within the first 30 days, we're going to block you. For, no, that doesn't work either. That's just that's no. just being an asshole. I don't want to be that guy. No, actually, we would really enjoy to see some reviews. And it's it's only it's not to puff our egos. It's so we can make this better for you. In your reviews, let us know what it is that you would like to hear us talk about. Because uh -huh. I know I love Research. I love doing research, apparently. So, um, and I know Lynn just already knows it, and that's why I got to do so much research. But, uh, yeah, we, we would we would really enjoy. Love. Yeah, we research. haven't had. A, a, yeah, we haven't had a review recently. Um, we've got some great ones, both and some different ones. You can either leave it on our website, right on the homepage. You can go and leave a review there. Our current episode is always on the homepage of our website, or you can do it right on our Facebook page. Either way, like we, you know, we haven't had a recent one. So, um, that would be, we would love that. And sharing out the video would be great. And, uh, and check the show resources tab regularly on our website because we will add, uh, downloads. And uh, I think I want to put that little video that I sent you today up there as well to go with the download so people can see it. That that YouTube that, video. It's a great little one. Hey? I, I, yeah, it was only a couple minutes. I think it was like a minute 53 long. Yeah. I hope that's what you're talking about because you cut out and I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Oh, man, but, the technical stuff. Yeah, that little video would be good with the PDF. <laughs> yeah, so the video, the PDF, it, they'll fit really well. And you can also find 
the three steps that we were talking about, that will be in there as well. And uh, and there's some other references that I'm going to throw in there because it was pretty amazing. Uh, and before, but before we get off tonight, I really want to talk about Mile High Radio. You know, they have been an hour music by Pink. Floyd. Oh, there they are, right there. I forgot to mute the tab. But <laughs> that's uh, it's you know, Mile Floydian High Radio. Slip they, on tonight. Yeah, you know, they stepped up in a big way, putting us on their station, and you know, Lynn. You know your part with Mile High Radio. That's you know that not to be overlooked either. But you know to the to the Mile High fa uh, family over there, just want to say thank you to all of you guys. You guys are putting out some great content, and I'm glad that we were able to produce uh, some content along with y'all. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you wanted to say something else at the beginning of the show, but you said you'd save it for the end. I'm curious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this last week. And I know Drew is not watching right now because I've been waiting for him to say anything at all to give me an idea that the man, the myth, the legend, the, well, I'm not saying that word on this. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Drew Carson invited both Lynn and I on his show, The Haver, his season finale. And, you know, I love being able to go on other platforms, Yeah, you know, with you. You know, we get to have so much fun. You know, we get to talk about grit and grace. We get to talk about the community. But at the same time, we get to cut loose and we get to show that maybe that little bit more fun, inebriated type side. At least I was inebriated. Well, you, you do anyway. Um, yeah, I had, you know, a couple of tall boys and I was about ready to kick off a few times. But I had so much fun. And, you know, Steve Hamish, he, he came on from the Ranting and Raving podcast. Uh, Samson from, oh, what, what it was a gaming podcast. I'm not a gamer. I don't know anything about gaming. Yeah, I don't I know. I, just, I can't remember what that was. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he was on um, Greg he from Scotland, <laughs> hey, from the one town over, Drew's from drinking buddy from the pub. You know, it was amazing. It was awesome to meet him. Because he is one of those people that neither one of us would have ever met in our lives had Drew not, you know, created that relationship opportunity. Absolutely. And his hat. His, his hat. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you're easily offended, you probably won't watch the show. Don't watch it. But if you have, you know, an iron will and you can just laugh at stupid things people say like Lynn was the entire episode. I mean, we got four solid tears coming in uh, cries, laugh cries coming from Lynn in that episode. And it was, it was so fun. Oh, oh Dave, Dave Mareska, you know, yeah, you say something on network. I came on, absolutely killed it. Awesome. Awesome time spending, uh, even just the, the two and a half hours I spent with him was more than enough, but we still had such a great time. You know. Yeah, that went on and on and on. But yeah, if you're interested, just look for the the Haver, H A V, or even you can Google it and uh, you'll find it because it's on YouTube. Yeah, and it's part of his Terra Firma network, and he does another show which is all about horror and sci-fi and all that kind of stuff. And the guy, he does a great job with that. He interviews some of the biggest names in yeah. you know, screenwriting and everything like that. I was on an episode with him where we were sitting, well, through our computers right next to each other, as close as we could be. But the guy who wrote Die Hard, uh, I'm sitting there talking to the guy who wrote my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I, the movie I watched back yeah. to back to back. And I'm getting, I was sitting there talking to him. So that was, that was one of the coolest experiences I had this last year on somebody else's show for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much fun to get on somebody else's show. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. But that's all the time that we've got for this show. So we're done talking about somebody else. We better <laughs> let you know what you can find us. <laughs> God, it goes fast. I know. It goes so fast. So do you want me to take it tonight since your audio is kind of going wonky? Yeah, God. Um, so please reach out to us. Connect with us. Go on over to gritandgracetv.com submit those awesome topic ideas because in September, second week in September, we are going to be switching to three nights a week. This is going to be so much fun. I know 
we are going to be able to crush this because it's it's going to be awesome. I mean, we're going to have topic after topic after topic, and we're going to be starting conversations that you never even knew existed. So which make is going sure to require us. Them. Which is going to require us to act as if big. We don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, hey, everybody, thank you for watching tonight's episode. And if you're watching on the replay, you are just as important to us as anybody else. Thank you for tuning into this episode. And remember, you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect solution. And this is what Lynn would say, stay wild. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, all.